Hello guys, and welcome back to another tutorial for mCrater. Today what we're going to be looking at is the next part for the advanced login screens and stuff like that. So we're going to be focusing on blocks today, which is the second part. The previous video that we basically worked on was about just a GUI login screen. This is a little bit different. It just requires a password or string of text to basically access it. Uh, I didn't figure you would need a username in, for a particular block, but basically what you can do is you can create safes and stuff like that. So when you place down the block, it does a bunch of stuff behind the scenes. And then what you can do is basically set the password. And if you don't set the password and close out, then it obviously you want to open up that screen again. So we have still that screen. So one, two, three, four, five, we'll set the password. It lets, lets us know what our password is. And then we can put our items and stuff in here. Now, right now it's in its unlocked state. So if you want to lock it, we can lock it and now it's in its lock state so anyone that will be trying to access the um, particular block can't actually break it or anything like that until the password is in so like this and now that it's in the unlock state we can break the block if we want to and pick it up again now the block is actually unbreakable like bedrock or some other blocks as well in Minecraft but the uh, trick is when it's in its unlock state you can actually go to start destroy it and it will spawn the gem and all right, so now that we got that out of the way, all right, so let's go into mCrater. There's a lot to cover today, so let's get started. The first thing that we're gonna look at is the actual login screens and the set password screens. Now, the same thing is for both of them. It's just the text field is password and the button is unlock. And then there's a just a text up here letting us know what kind of window or block we're currently in. And password, the only thing that's really important is knowing that the text input name is password, all lowercase. That's for that one. And the set password is also lowercase password. The only difference is the button has the set password title for it and those go to certain button procedures which you can see set password button unlock button lock button so all those are the different types of buttons and then the last thing that we have is the safe inventory so this is where we basically can store our items and stuff like that so we have the lock button here all right so now that we know exactly where all the particular inventories are we can actually look at the block so again we needed to set our textures set the rotation if you wanted to and going on to properties I have it set to unbreakable right here because that's going to be important for making sure that the block doesn't get broken or accessed by another player if a player can break it it kind of defeats the point of making it secure right so it's important to make that sure that's checked the other thing that I've done is I've also enabled resistance to 64,000 and the hardness is set to 64,000 just for an extra layer of precaution I suggest having no drop amount just because it doesn't really need to have a drop amount. The tool harvest level doesn't really matter. Moving on to advanced properties, I've set the tick rate to one and the type of block to iron. You can set all the other settings the way you want. However, I do suggest reaction being pushed set to block because you don't want it to be moved by another player. This could be could actually mess up the inventory inside and they'll be able to get the items that way. And for AI path no type, I've set this to blocked as well. So the entities won't see it as a feasible block to go through. For example, they'll try to avoid it unless there isn't any other way. So it's good for making it like a fence or whatever. And we've needed MBT data, so I've enabled this, as well as because it has an inventory. We've set our safe inventory, and we don't want a right-click event. We're gonna be doing that through procedures. And it has an inventory of nine slots, and then we want these last two particular ones here. Now, to disable the, the actual hopper dropping thing, I'll go into a, a future tutorial on how to do that properly as there is an actual 
proper way to do it, I guess. There's something that I found. I thought it might be better for a separate tutorial, though. For the per energy and fluid storage, nothing. Uh, for triggers, there are a few different triggers. There are three. First one is on block right clicked. There is the when block is placed by player. And then the last procedure type is when block starts to destroy. This is where our dropping properties come into play. This is basically our opening and access procedure and this is for basically making sure that we set the variables and stuff beforehand. So now that we have that all settled, let's go into the other first main three procedures right here which I just covered in the block. So set block our safe block is placed by now this is basically the place by the player so when it's being placed by the player what we're doing is we're basically just setting a variable mbt for the block and we're setting this to false this variable basically holds the the knowledge of basically saying okay it has a password or not if it has a password then it'll be used later on in the code we want to make sure that it's set to false because it doesn't have a password yet and the next thing that we need to do is open the screen for set password screen. So this is the set password screen that we've made prior. To find these two blocks, block procedures, if you scroll down a little bit, there's the true or false MBT tag that you can assign. And for the open screen, that's under player procedures, and it's right under here. You'll be seeing a lot of this one come up in the next few parts. So moving on to safe player start to destroy. Now this basically tests for a couple other things. Now we're there's another variable in the block. It's the is the block basically locked. Now if it isn't locked, then so what we want to do if the block is not locked is basically remove the block and spawn particles. And then we also want to spawn the gem of the safe. The safe offset for making it center is 0.5. I'm not sure if this is actually the case. Uh, it's hard to tell because items actually flop all over the place when you break them. So I'm not sure if it's the proper location to be center or not, but that's what I've set it to. And then what I've done is basically make an else statement. And then I've basically set a message and saying that it needs to be unlocked before you basically break it. To do this, you can go to flow control, grab a second if statement right down here. You want to go to logic, grab a equal to sign, a light blue operator like that. And then you want to go back to block properties, get MBT logic tag. And then you want to basically set your logic take name here which is for the locked properties or locked variable that we're basically set, setting it under and then you want to go to logic and grab a true statement and then right click on that and then set it to false and then you want to go to block again scroll down until you see remove block at and spawn particles and we're going to just drop that right there and then we're going to go to world management and then we're going to spawn gem and then we're going to set the block to the block we've basically are right clicking on. And then we're going to remove the X and Z and get a math operator. And then we're going to get a number operator. And then we're going to set this to 0 0.5. And then we're going to duplicate this twice. And then we're going to add the X and Z to the two blocks. And there you go, you have that part set up. Now that we have that, we need to basically output a text to the player to let them know that they're, they need to unlock the block first. So we're just going to go to player procedures, scroll down until we see send message and then grab that block there. And then we're going to just output some message in the text field right here. And that's all there is to that particular procedure. The last one that is mainly for the block is for on block right clicked. So this is basically the part where it gets a little more advanced. We're testing if the play, the block has a password or not. If it has a password, then what we need to do is basically test if the block is locked or not. If the block is locked, then what we want to do is open the login screen. And if the block is not locked, then what we want to do is open the safe inventory. 
And if the block has no password, then we want to set the password, open the set the password screen. I've covered how to basically do, get the tags and stuff like that, but just for a brief overview, you need this particular block twice, like so, and then you need a logic operator, you need to set this to true, like so, and then you're gonna duplicate that once. So it's like that. And then what you need to go to do is go to block properties, grab a logic statement. And this is the first one is going to be if your, your block has a password. The second one is going to be if your block is locked or not. So we're gonna test if it's locked. And then the other ones, the other procedures, you just go under player procedures and scroll down until you see open screen. And we've covered that already. So login screen, and then you want the second one to be the set inventory or safe inventory, pardon me. And then the last one you want is the set password. So exactly like that. Okay, so that's our main three procedures for the safe itself. The other procedures are the buttons. So the other buttons are basically the set password button this is where the set password comes into it there are only a few different procedure things going on here the first one that we're doing is we're setting a mbt tag for the password it is a string tag and the type of password it's called block password very simple and then we're just getting the text input from the set password screen to basically set as the string for the MBT variable for the block. The other things that we're setting is we're setting the block has password and we're setting this to true. And then what we're doing is we're basically setting the block locked and we're setting that to false so people can easily access the safe and drop their items in right away. After that, what we're doing is we're basically we're closing the GUI and then we're printing out a message to the player password has been set to and then we've basically outputted the password of the variable string that we just set. So to create this, what you need to do is go to block procedures, scroll down until you see set mbt tag and it's the green one. And then what you want to do is set the tag name. This has to be unique for the block. And then what you want to do is delete this part right here. Go to GUI slot and GUI procedures, grab this, set this as your text field name. Then what you want to do is go back to block procedures, scroll down until you see a light blue operator, grab this one. This one needs to be your set password and you're gonna set that to true. And then you need another one, so just duplicate that. And then you wanna set the block as locked MBT variable and set this to false. Next, what you wanna do is go to player procedures, scroll down just a little bit, and there should be one that says close any GUI op open for and then provide an entity. So this one right here. And then lastly, what we need to do is basically create the string for the message. So what we're gonna do is go back down to player procedures, send message, and then we're going to basically just move that out of the way for the time being, go to text, and then we're going to get text with, and then we're gonna click on the gear icon, drag another one right down here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually say set password or password set to, and then we're going to put a comma there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do another comma just at the end of it. And then what we want to do is go to block procedures, get MBT tag, and drop that in and then this has to be the same name as your string text up here. So basically that's all that's going on in this particular section. After you've set that up, what you need to do is go to your lock button and then what we're going to do here is we're going to get the password from the screen that we've basically logging in with. So when we're on the login screen, we have a text field for the password as well. This gets the user input to make sure that the user input from the text field is the same as the MBT variable that we've set when we first set up the block. So to do this, we just need a else statement and a if statement and else statement like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get, log or get string 
So we're getting a string operator. And then what we're going to do is go to block procedures, scroll down until we get MBT data. And we're gonna put that, the variable on this side here. We're gonna use the same variable name as our string password. And then we're going to go and go to GUI procedures, get text field name, and we're gonna set this to our text field ID. So password. And this will test if the user input is equal to the stored variable that we have set up. Last thing that we need to do is basically output a couple messages. So the first one, what we're gonna do is we're going to set message and then say it's the wrong password if it's not equal to the same thing. And then we also want to close the GUI. So we've covered these two things already, so I'm not gonna go into details with that. And for the other one, we want to open up the inventory screen for if the password is equal to the MBT data. And we're gonna set open up safe inventory. The next thing that we need to do is we're going to output a message. So this is basically just letting us know that it's unlocked now. And the last thing that we're doing is we're basically making sure that the block is not locked. So we're going to set the block being locked to false. And that's all that's going on there. The last thing that we have is our locked button. So this is basically the exact same thing almost, but rather than have to unlock the block, what we're doing is we're testing if the block has a password. And if that's true, then what we're going to do is we're going to lock the block, uh, set the lock variable to true, close the GUI, and then give user output. If it doesn't have a password, then what we want to do is basically open up the set password screen. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to grab an if statement, logic operator, like so, and then we're going to go and click a, get a uh, operation for true or false. And then we're going to go to block properties, grab a light blue operator and make sure that our password, our, the block has a test for if the block has a password or not. And the other one, basically we're just setting an MBT variable equal to true, closing the GUI and setting the output message to let people know that it's locked. And if it's not any of that, then what we want to do is basically just open up the text, the inventory screen for set password. So hopefully you guys found today's tutorial useful. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. I have a few more of these tutorials for password types. Uh, I'm gonna be doing one on items and entities as well. So tune in for that in the future. Um, again, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. This really helps with uh, the algorithms and all that stuff and comment down below. Let me know what you learned and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.